from today is Fulton Hartzog. He's our senior applications expert with our FM group. He has 30 years of experience managing AutoCAD drawings and facilities data. He's worked in healthcare, government, education, and corporate organizations to achieve long-term ROI, which is return on investment through increased space and asset utilization. And he encompasses the entire facilities management lifecycle from planning to field verification to managing AutoCAD drawings in conjunction, in conjunction with other data sources. So basically, here's today's agenda. We're going to talk about what is facilities management. We're going to talk about how we use basic AutoCAD to manage these items. And then I will be talking, I will be talking about that and then some automation that's still a manual process. Most of it, but we can leverage some of the things that we can do in AutoCAD there. And then we're going to talk about how we leverage that data in AutoCAD with CAD as a graphical database, consolidate drawing data from multiple drawings, in CAD data with an external data source, talk about smart client extension for AutoCAD, smart client, the web central web interface for space and assets and telecom. All right, so the big question, ISO, which is the International Standards Organization defines facilities management as organizational function which integrates people, place, and processes within the build environment with the purpose of improving the quality of life of people and productivity of the core business. That is the true definition of facilities management. Now, in layman's terms, what it means is it's part of an organization that manages, monitors, and compiles all of the organization's physical buildings and properties and has a responsibility to produce reports, documentation, and other items so that the respective departments and management is aware of who is where and what is in each area. Those of you that are on the call today are already fully versed in what facilities management is, but I like to put this in there just so you, just in case you wanna know what it really means. So, basic AutoCAD, right? So we can use basic AutoCAD to manage these items. Most of you are probably already doing this today right you use basic AutoCAD functions to get relevant data as you've determined and found out it's a very manual process um, AutoCAD in itself is not purpose-built to extract this data easily you can only deal with the data in one drawing at a time and you have lots of properties checkings manual calculations and use other programs to crunch numbers like you might have an Excel spreadsheet you might have your calculator app open to add and stuff, and you have lots of copy and paste to generate documentation for distribution. This is fairly normal. This is where we start with the facilities management piece. And then when we graduate up to the next step, we add some automation. So there's still a manual process for most of it. So we may have done some custom programming that's created to speed up part of that process. Still some manual work, but now some automation exists to make some of these tasks go much faster. You're still using other programs to output the documents and reports, so you're still copying and pasting data into Word, Excel, whatever, and it's still one drawing at a time. So with that, what I'm gonna give you here is a brief demonstration of basic AutoCAD to derive this data. So I come in here, so what I have here is, this is something I used to do. Um, I, I did a lot of space and asset management for a cruise line. So what I have here is a picture of a cruise ship. Um, I just have a small section of it. Now, mind you, these things are much larger. Um, so we come in here and we might have to go to here. We might have to go to area and we need to figure out what is the area of this. So I come in here and I grab that and I grab this and I come down here and I grab that, right? And these are all just plain windows. So we'll grab all of this, right? This should all look fairly familiar to everyone at this point because this is what we normally do, right? And you'll see that I'm not exactly perfect. I'm just attempting to grab more or less the steel to steel here, right? And that's gonna give me an area right here that is 40,270.4383. That's in square millimeters. Everything that we need here is done in square meters. So I would need to take this number, copy it to Excel, or copy it to my calculator, make some stuff, right? And then I have to copy this somewhere else, and I need to keep a running track of this data. So that's the basics, right? Basic AutoCAD out of the box. Now, with a little custom programming, right? So what I've done here is now I have some hatch patterns in here. 
So these hatch patterns, what these are doing is these are giving me information. So if I click on one of these hatch patterns, now I have some data, right? Like I have an area here and I have a cumulative area. So if I click on a second one, there's some color coding in here, things like that. So what I can do with this is I've got a little code, right? Get area T, this is a little code that I wrote. And what it's doing is it's taking all this information and it told me, oh, this hatch pattern is bad. So I'm just gonna delete this one. Right, and we'll go get. So if my hatch is incorrect or my hatch does not have a value associated to it, which means I drew it wrong or it blew up somewhere along the way, it'll tell me that information. I get an output down here. And with that output, I actually have a little table with fields in here. So my Lisp actually creates some Lisp variables. Those Lisp variables come in here and they populate this table. So now I can see exactly what's where in square meters and I do all the math in the fields. I've also got, right, if I wanna label these, and now I've got labels in all of my hatches. So everywhere where I've got a hatch, I now have a label in square meters to no decimal places, right? Pretty basic stuff, like this one's just a field. If I grab this, make this bigger, you're gonna see here that when I regen, it now goes to 55 square meters. If I rerun, my get area, right? So these are some things that I programmed to try and speed up a process. This process used to take weeks, and now it takes a matter of one or two days. And you'll see here that this is public restrooms at 35.5. I regen all, and now it goes to 55.1. So my table is automatically updating as I change my information. So those are the basics, right? We've got our basic AutoCAD where we have to do a lot of number crunching. I have some advanced AutoCAD with some additional programming where now I can generate some tables. Now I still need to manually copy this data out and put it somewhere else. But I'm part, I'm trying right now to increase the process or make the process better by automating what I can. So that is in a nutshell, the basic AutoCAD used to derive this data. So with that, I'm gonna hand this over to Peter. Peter. Thank you very much, Ryan. And I've never, um, I've seen all sorts of uh, floor plans, um, but I've never seen a uh, floor plan for a deck, so that was kind of interesting. Um, so in our facilities management group, uh, we got our start back in 1985. Um, we uh, field verified Duke hospitals and um, did all sorts of drawings together for that. And one of the things we realized is that it's very difficult to start to consolidate data across multiple different drawings and multiple different buildings. Um, and in our facilities group, we've always kind of considered CAD as a graphical database. So it's a, kind of like a way to uh, see different things. And um, at its core, as Fulton kind of goes into technology, I'd like to tell you that this is rocket science, but it isn't. You take each individual room, and you can see that room in red over there um, in the corner, uh, sorry, on the left-hand side, um, and there's a connection that runs inside AutoCAD and attaches that to a database, and that's called the smart client up top, and you'll see that it's populating three fields that we care about, building, floor, and room. And uh, after that, in gray, you'll see 29403. It's pulling the square footage for that room, or it could be square meters. And what we do in facilities after that, if you look underneath, we kind of do a table join using that building floor room. And we can start at look at uh, attributes about the room. We can also drop assets within the room and do all sorts of other things. As we look at this in facilities, I talk about what I jokingly call a very complex concept of uh, where's my stuff. Um, and this is very powerful for helping people locate their space and assets. As we move to a more connected world, this is going, the importance of this data is going to become more important. Um, so where Apple and Google are in terms of phones, right now we use our uh, GPS outdoors to decide where to go. Um, internal wayfinding isn't rolled out completely, but I've done some pilots on it. It's very easy to roll out, but floor plans are going to become a lot more important um, because now you can locate where you are inside a building within three to five meters, which is a pretty good accuracy. Um, so what I'm going to do now is hand things over to Fulton Hartzog. Um, I joke that I'm not allowed to uh, show the software or smoke will start to rise above it. Well, thank you, Peter. 
and I am looking for my ability to share. Do you want to talk about this slide first, or do you want me to go oh, right into? Uh, well, uh, yeah, Archivist is a system of components. So one of those components is AutoCAD uh, or Revit. Um, it is also uses a piece of software that's actually um, installed on the local machine called the Smart Client. Web Central is the program, and it's on a web server, and that's it, it kind of is the traffic cop for the data moving between the various parts of the um, user interface as well as the database. And then um, there is a, always a telecom aspect of uh, things that are going on. So let's go on then and let me show you those components. All right, I'm going to go ahead and make you the presenter. Okay, and now you should be able to share your screen. Perfect. And you can and probably actually, close that I'm Cisco on, meeting. <laughs> I'm on the wrong one here. There you go. <laughs> so let me drag this So Can I drag that? Yeah. Okay, so this is the smart client. Uh, again, installed locally on my machine. And the reason I wanted to show this particular view of buildings is it gives you some idea of what a database can do for you that as uh, Brian was talking about, you can't just, you can't do easily in a single drawing. And that is to bring a lot of data together. <clears throat> so these, each of these buildings has uh, one or more floors, and then you begin to get aggregate data, like the total gross area for the external part of the building or the internal gross area, or uh, in many cases, some of these buildings don't have rooms, but room area uh, for that particular, those particular buildings. You can also track a lot of other data about each building, including uh, the ability to map it um, with latitude and longitude. So you have a, a lot of things you can do in a database because you're, you're able to aggregate all that data together. So I'm gonna go to another view just to show you briefly. Um, the rooms that um, Peter was referring to. So you have a list of rooms and I'm gonna be focused in a particular building. So I'm just gonna make a focus into that. You have a floor and then you have the rooms and then you have a room area that is the same room area that Ryan was showing. We use the polyline to make that connection. Um, and that connection is over here on the right with drawing name and entity handle. Um, and that, that makes it a unique um, value in our database. And then you have information that you can classify the space. So you can classify its category type, its room standard, room use, uh, division, uh, department. So you have lots of ways to classify the space. And each of these classifications has a hatch pattern that goes with them. So once you uh, kind of have some background data, you begin to build um, information between your um, drawing and your database. The way that is done is a polyline, as I was saying, is drawn around the room in the manner in which you want. This one happens to be face the wall. There may be um, BOMA standard, uh, which is uh, taking up all the area in the floor. Uh, but even if you use face the wall, the remaining area can be calculated and that can be distributed throughout. In this case, we're showing room numbers with square footage. Um, but there is more data to be seen, so you can edit data from here. The database is the single source uh, that, of storage of data. So if I make changes in the drawing, it will reflect anywhere else that I see that I'm using the um, information. So you see the information here is uh, put in. If you want to add other information, you can simply click here. It'll give you the full list that you have available. Um, so if we go to management and we click on that, then you see it fills in 
the management, both in the department and also in division. And then when you save, that information is saved in the database and available, again, anywhere you're using the program. Um, as you begin, as you do this, you can, uh, on the AutoCAD drawing, you can, um, I'm just going to do it by type here, and say, OK. So the program gives you uh, highlighting uh, for all the rooms that have uh, at assigned. And then it also gives you a similar um, um, legend like Orion was showing. So again, Archibus is taking advantage of I'm going to see if I want to see the jacks that are in this or the space plates, the equipment that's in there. You can see those things uh, begin to pop up. And any other information like walls and floor, uh, uh, doors, that kind of thing. You can also highlight from here. So I have several that are predefined and others can be created as well. So if you put in the departments, now I see those departments colored in. Um, the departments over here on the right, on the left in this lower section are giving me some square footage for the division. And then if I click into the division, I see the departments under that division, their square footages, their color. I can also do a legend to give me what each color represents. And then further this so can send it out to a PDF file as well. I click here. I have a few controls here that I can use. So I'm just going to go ahead and generate it. And I'll just take a moment to go through those. It, it's basically respecting this restriction that I've done over here. So it's going to bring up for looks like eight floors PDF. And this is um, it has a little bit of a title block around it, legend in it, and uh, information that you want on the drawing. I'm taxing it a little bit this morning. But too much. Close that. I mean, you can search through all the drawings, and so I'm just going to go down to this one for make it a little easier on it. So now I'm just looking at one floor. Now when I try to print, it should run a little easier. Oops. So you get a print of the, and, all, and the, what's surrounding it is, um, can be set up the way you need it to be. Uh, some of this information is coming out of the database. Some of it is just static. So the other uh, aspect of this that I wanted to show you, now that you kind of have an idea of just the way that a database can kind of enhance what uh, Ryan has already shown us is kind of a big picture uh, view of this. So I'm going to go to what's called the Global Portfolio Dashboard. And this is going to bring us um, a variety of reports that kind of cover all of the information that is in this database. 
about the uh, various inventory that we have. So we have a list here of the, or uh, uh, just of some basic information, the total number of buildings, total gross area, what part of that is leased, uh, costs, archivists can track all these things if you're willing to put the data in it. <laughs> um, so this section here uh, is about operating costs. And so again, if you hover, they're interactive telling you information, but also if you click, and you get details about that information. There's occupancy that can be tracked, uh, what kind of use the buildings have, lease expirations at the bottom, um, owned and leased buildings in various uh, locations, values, age of buildings, and then you also see them on the map. And there, the theme here is by building use. So when you hover on one of them, it gives you information that way. But then when you click on one, it will give you further information, allow you to zoom into other aspects of the data. And then you can also focus in. So if I go to the Americas and filter, you see that it focuses on the Americas, but it also focuses all the rest of the data in the um, in the view to just that just that area, that region. So that kind of gives you an idea of kind of the, going from the basic uh, AutoCAD functionality into being able to aggregate all that data that you've created uh, into a form that can be consumed by everybody that, without having to have AutoCAD skills. Okay. Brian, back to you. All right. So now we have gone through, we've talked about this information, we've shown you the basics in AutoCAD, we've shown you some of the things that the FM group can do with uh, Archibus, and now it's question and answer time. And I know we have one for sure from Mike asking if both AutoCAD, he has both AutoCAD and Revit within a suite, and he wants to, can you touch on the possibility of the reasons for choosing Revit over AutoCAD to accomplish similar FM end results? Yes, uh, you do, you have to make a choice per floor uh one or the other but you can do both in terms of your total inventory um the reason you would choose autocad is because you like portability it's something you're familiar with it's something that uh, is a particular skill set revit is a different skill set and it does have a lot more information in it it is a it is a robust database uh, in itself uh, on a building basis or some sub portion of the building. And in some cases, people will put in more than one building in a, in a Revit file. The, um, from a CAD perspective, Revit is, a, is not a portable file, uh, meaning it is a minimum of 20 megs. So it's not the kind of thing that if you're used to dropping a drawing in a um, email and send it off. You're not going to do that with a Revit file. <laughs> um, but, but in terms of the amount of data you can get, the Revit file is tremendous. And it also has the 3D aspect uh, to it and uh, gives you the ability to um, see everything in its, in its location. Uh, walkthroughs, those kind of things. So there, there's a lot of good things about Revit um, that are, and, and it's probably going to end up where all of us are using it, but it is a new skill set um, to learn. And, and uh, to kind of segue off of, or, or, you know, dovetail into what Fulton is talking about, it's, you know, portability is important, 
Um, you know, AutoCAD drawings are fairly straightforward and simple. Those of us that are used to AutoCAD will find CAD a lot easier. The skill set is different in Revit. It's hugely different. You have to understand in AutoCAD, for the most part, you're drawing dumb lines, arcs, and tools that represent things. Revit is actual object-based modeling. So when you draw a wall, it is literally a wall. It has the properties of the wall. When you put a floor down, it's a floor. When you put a ceiling down, it's a ceiling. Things like that. So just be aware that there's some different skill sets and Revit models can get quite large. Um, you know, your base Revit model with nothing in it, I think starts at around 20 meg. Uh, generally speaking, your Revit model can be upwards of, you know, two, 300 meg very quickly, depending on the size you're building. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. Uh, looks like we have another question. In a plan with assets within a facility, how can the CAD database be linked to an iterative workspace, workplace management system to show uh, preventive maintenance history on each asset type? Can that be done? Uh, yes. Um, the, the assets are um, in, in a drawing are um, done with blocks. And so you make that connection like we did with the polyline, you make a connection with the block. And then information about that asset can be reported out either in the web format or in, in any of the three formats actually, um, AutoCAD or um, Smart Client. Um, but do you have an if, example of that? Um, yeah, Archivus does have a CMMS system, so um, so there's certainly that going on in it too. Let me. I'm going to make it to the presenter so you can show it. Yeah, let me. I'm going to go get it here. Let me show my screen. And then... I'll do it with the model here. So this is a Revit model with a site plan and uh, things like that. So I'm just going to click off some of this. We can see it a little better. And add in the HVAC and the plumbing. And then I've got a uh, piece of equipment here on top. I've got information about that particular piece of equipment. But I can also right click on it and I can see um, information about that one. And I may have picked the wrong one here. So let me go back. So I can go and see all the information I have about that particular piece of equipment. Expand this out a little bit so you can see it there a little more. So I have, it's an air, an air handling unit here. Uh, it will show me a picture of that piece of equipment. It shows the team, the custodians, and any of all the spaces that are uh, served by that piece of equipment. Um, I can also uh, see where that is in the floor plan, and I can also use a viewer if I have these kind of uh, pictures to go in and see a 3D view of that room where that is. So you have the ability to track the whole system, each individual piece in the system. And um, then you can also, when you're, there are, there's reporting about what's going on with the um, information. So if I go in here, we have all the information about the equipment, uh, its code or it's, it's a unique identifier uh, it's information about the piece itself and where it's located. 
uh, its affiliation with uh, whatever department or whatever person. You can also include custodians that work on it, uh, how it's used. This can be connected with um, building automation system to update data on a regular basis. So you, metering and that kind of thing can be added. You have the cost associated with that particular piece of equipment uh, and purchase information and warranty information. Uh, you can have documents associated with it either directly or through um, standard uh, equipment standards, dates when the equipment was um, put into service, what purchase dates when it was in for repair, things like that. Uh, telecom, how it's hooked up in the system. Um, specifically, Archivist has a full telecom um, application. And then you, you can do surveys on the equipment as well. And as you do the surveys, then you get updates for that. And as I mentioned earlier, you can hook it up uh, to ERP and sort of track when the last time it was, when that data came over the last time. So in addition to that, <laughs> uh, let me kick out of this. When I go here, I can create a work request. So from here, I can uh, it gives me the piece of equipment where it's located, and I can say here's what the problem is, and uh, give it a description, and then submit it to the system. So, any questions about that? All right, and the next and, question, go ahead, sorry. And yeah, and I think I just might want to touch on that. So as we talk about this, um, Fulton's showing this all within Archibus, which is one of these big IWMS systems. Um, realistically, what happens when we work with people, they've got a bunch of different systems. So you might have a space management system, um, like Archibus or FM systems, and an asset system. Uh, like IBM Maximo or Enforce. So the other thing, Oscar, that's important, you can um, link different systems in the background so it doesn't necessarily need to uh, tie everything together. Once that basic link is made with a floor plan and you populate that building floor room table, you can send that to other places. All right, and our next question is from Penn. It says, can you touch on indoor mapping a little? Um, I'm not sure what he's referring to, so if you've got a little more detail, Penn, I'd like to know specifically what you're looking I for. I kind of touched, yeah, I think I kind of touched on why this is going to become more important over time. Um, so I was talking about leveraging floor plans for wayfinding. Um, and if I, I could, I wasn't prepared to share my screen. I never asked you. I got like three slides that I think might be helpful. All right. Would you like me to pass that on to you, Peter? Yes. Okay. But you might, might need to walk through how to, uh, how do I share myself, sir? All right. I'm now making you the presenter. So and it you should sh be known that, that Peter has done this himself. Even a sales guy can do it. There you go, Peter. You've got. We're looking at your screen with your uh, with your Salesforce up. With my Salesforce up. Okay, great. Let me get over to let me get over to the right screen. Way too many screens here. You know what? I'm just gonna do. Give me a second. I took off my multiple monitors. That makes it better. Everyone can see my screen now? We do. Okay. Um, so at high level, um, and I recently did this at a mall down the street, and I'm going to talk specifically in this case about what Apple's doing, um, but it's not too different from the other players. Um, and of course, my, um, I, my computer's giving me some issues. Um, but if I share my screen here, um, it's a pretty simple process. So. This uh, I did for Apple, so in Apple's world, I'll explain this, but it's not that different from the rest of the world, um, as we'll do this, and Esri has um, a way to do this as well. Um, but in a nutshell, you take your, your, your building footprint and you drop it within um, 
a map from one of the providers. And in this case, I'm, I'm doing this uh, with an Apple device um, in their infrastructure. And what you do is then you drop that floor plan into a space. Um, and um, then walk the facility with an app. And I used this in my first presentation because uh, it really helps me think about the difference between how we used to do things and how we'll do things uh, moving forward. So the way the Apple mapping work, works is it pulls your Wi-Fi off a certain radius. And historically, we've been managing floor plans for facilities for years, and we would always go around the outside of the walls, if that makes sense. In the case of the, the, the Apple world, um, I kind of did this wrong. Um, and you walk, you push them up, and then um, you can take a look at where things are. So I was at a mall um, just this week, actually, um, down the street from me because I can't travel. Um, and I walked their facility and they had taken the facility and dropped it and I mapped it from an indoor um, perspective. And you can see this is me and this is Talbot's and uh, this has an accuracy internally of about three to five meters. So I'm kind of well within the tolerance. Um, and here I am standing with my phone above Apple. Um, and as I mentioned this, um, I think this is kind of cool. Um, I run around with people and try to help find, find things um, within facilities. Um, but it kind of represents where things are moving forward, where drawing data is going to become more important. And this is kind of a use case of where am I, but there are all sorts of other use cases for IoT devices. So you, you could, you know, highlight your AutoCAD drawings where a sensor has gone off, um, you know, that there's a problem uh, in that room. It opens a new world's capabilities. Is that helpful? All right. Yep, he said yes. All right. So would the use of a Navis works be too limited for some FM abilities? And I think I can answer that question pretty easily, and I'm pretty sure the answer to that is yes, because Navis works actually has nothing other than a representation of the information. It has very little beyond that. Um, you, there is some data you can get out of Navisworks, but Navisworks is essentially a picture of the stuff. It actually doesn't have a lot of information otherwise. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, it would depend on the system. Our, the, the system we're showing today doesn't have a Navisworks integration. Yep. And let's see, um, can the preventive maintenance schedule be automated? Um, yes. Okay. Well, let's see, um, Oscar, who was the one that asked about the the assets there, is they're using uh, Turinga, but they're in the process of implementing a joint solution with GIS. So that looks like exactly what you answered him already. So anybody else have any additional questions? Can the Apple be? Can the Apple Map be used for our facility map for visitors and new people? That's one of the. That's going to be one of the main use cases. Um, and a good example um, is um, um, raise your hand. And if you were on the room, everyone would have laughed. If you've gotten lost in a hospital, um, we're always getting lost in hospitals. Signage isn't isn't great in them in general. Um, but one of the use cases where that's being deployed is. So you can find out where you're going um, in a hospital when you're going to visit someone or you're there for a procedure. And he's also asking, is that a separate Apple app? Um, so within that, um, there's an app that I use to go um, walk the facility and gather to, to get, get the, the, the blue dot inside. But Apple has written all of this into Apple Maps properly. And you'll see um, the, the other providers are all doing the same thing. So, uh, and then I should also specify that doesn't mean it's necessarily set with Maple or Google or Esri. The other thing that's going to help all of us is they're coming up with a common data format um, called an IMDF, which stands for Indoor Mapping Data Format. Um, and um, the good way to explain is it's kind of like a, a, you know, a, a, um, 
a specified CAD floor plan that will identify different things. Um, but the world is looked at a little differently, um, and I'll give you an example. So if you're in a um, uh, um, you're at a stadium, right? You, you, there's a big uh, right now. There's a place you know that sells hot dogs, right? And it's got a big counter. And historically, we'd all go stand in line at halftime, right, and wait for that. Well, moving forward as we go, you could go and wait in line for your hot dog, or you could order something from your fan app, and it would say, "Hey." Um, go to kiosk one, two, three, four in the hot dog line. Um, so what will actually happen is instead of having one long counter where, you know, typically that's what you see in that if you put that in CAD historically, that counter would be broken up into different segments so you could send people to, to different portions. So like um, me being last name Costanzo, I'd probably be in like the, the A through L um, line to get into. All right, and we have someone asking, what Archibus module is that equipment console part of? Is it included in version 23.2? It is. It's part of asset, ma inter uh, well, asset management. All right, any additional questions, anyone? Let's see. Let's see. Uh, what? Okay, what version were you demoing, Fulton? 25.1. Okay. And then can Hartog demo a preventive maintenance scheduling automation in Archibus for an asset? Yes. All right, let me pass this over to him. There you go. And then the last one is, what team size might you need per square feet? <laughs> That's a loaded question. <laughs> Greg, it depends what they're doing. Can you specify or what you're looking to do um, while Fulton's grabbing that up? Yep, and then and um, while he's, while he's doing that, Scott has a good question is, can, can, do we integrate with plan on? So, and I just want to take a step back and I should have done this. So Archibus is part of a class of system, uh, used to be called CAFM or um, is currently called IWMS, which is like a CAFM system on steroids. And just like he showed before, we, there's a plugin that runs inside AutoCAD, connects that information with a database. And there are a bunch of space and asset management systems which have very similar formats. Um, so the AutoCAD connection um, would be very similar. Um, so Scott, yeah, plan on would have this capability as would other space management tools. Okay. So the uh, creation of PMs is uh, based on a process that you go through to create those PMs. The first part of that process is creating the procedures, steps, and resources that will be needed to do that work. So there's uh, no particular magic to this, but the, they're named here, uh, and you determine something about what you what you want to have happen here. And you can also uh, use uh, some financial information like your account codes or a cost category in order to get um, what you need. You can also upload documents here. Um, and then each of these steps, um, this one's laid out with the steps separated. We typically put them all in one step because these generate a work request for each of the steps and we find that to be too much. So uh, either way, <clears throat> you put in the information you need that you want somebody to do while they're in the field and then you determine what resources are going to be needed and how many hours they would need to do this particular procedure. Uh, any parts that they might need or tools can also be applied. So once you have uh, that uh, set of procedures established, then you can apply those uh, to either uh, equipment or to locations. So Archimedes has the ability to to do PMs on, on particular rooms as well as on equipment. 
Um, so in order to set that up, you assign the procedures to a piece of equipment. So you can select a piece of equipment. I'm going to go to an HU here. And you see some of them are bold and some are not. The bold ones have at least one uh, assigned procedure to them. There is a list of procedures that you can select from and then assign to that. And once you once you have uh, a procedure assigned to a particular piece of equipment, you can set up the schedule. <clears throat> Um, so you have the schedule, you determine uh, what kind of frequency you want to do it, uh, what kind of interval type. You can do it uh, specifically in days, weeks, or year, or you can have a recurrence pattern that's more or less like Outlook's setup. <clears throat> so, and then you can also do fixed or floating. Fixed meaning it's going to generate a work request on every episode of the frequency. Um, Floating mean it will only start the next clock after you've completed uh, the one you have now. So that kind of depends on whether you need comply if you have compliance issues and you need to prove that you have one coming out every month, then you'd be fixed. If you're just trying to be efficient, then uh, floating might be a better better choice. Um, so once you've scheduled those. Then the next part of the process is to generate them. So the way you generate them is to come here. Uh, you can you can sort them if you choose. Uh, you have a date range. So if we were going to do this uh, for the for this week, um, we would or from now going forward, you you can't generate backwards. Although you can catch up if you miss some. Um, so we have this. So then we go to the next section and again we can have one pm schedule per work order or we can sort it by equipment or by other things here and then we generate so an archivist uh, a pm work request and a on-demand work request are both uh, treated in the same table so all of it ends up in the same bucket um, but they're just the, the way you, you um, initiate them is two different methods. So we saw earlier the, the uh, on-demand screen, and here we have uh, the way that PMs are generated. This can also be on a schedule, so you don't have to see it happen. It just, it just does it uh, when the schedule comes around. And then you have a view of the ones that have been uh, created. So for each of these, we have the work requests and you can see their trade or whatever resources are there for that particular one. So in this one, you see this one has a number of them. So that's how they're generated. All right, somebody's asking, is this preventive maintenance console that's being a demo proprietor to imagine it, or is it available in Web Central? Uh, this is an archivist product. I'm showing you out of the box. Yes, it's, it's a gazillion dollars. No, it's, it's right out of the box. Let's see, that's the PM scheduling and then uh, let's see, Peter's also looking at the PM planner. So I'm not sure if that's the same thing that we've just covered. Uh, it is a um, way to look at what we just covered. So you can see out into the future how much work you have to do and how much it will cost. We can associate with a trade and with all the parts, a cost. And as you saw, we put in a, how long we thought it would take. Um, so then you can see in the planner how that kind of lays out over the next few months. And also you can do some, show the costs and show the labor that would be involved. So down here at the bottom, sorry, get that the way. Down here at the bottom, you have the total costs for that period of time. So these are right now sorted by weeks. And then you see the 
how they lay out. All right, and then Peter's got one last question. Can you generate preventive maintenance schedules from the PM? Uh, that is not its purpose. It, it's to, it is truly just a planner. It's not the um, executor of the generation. All right, we have time for possibly one last question and then we'll wrap this up. AutoCAD and facilities management, not much AutoCAD here. Understood, Stephen, this, this was more of how we manage facilities with Arquebus and also showed how we do it how we do it currently with AutoCAD. That's, pr I showed you pretty much how we do it today, right? You either have dumb drawings and then you're forced to constantly grab data, change data, export data, you know, copy and paste data. And then you're right back to, you know, you can only work off single drawings, things like that. I showed you essentially everything that you can do in AutoCAD for facilities management. Basic AutoCAD plus a little additional coding of things that I've written or something that maybe you've written, things like that. And does this integrate with Tableau? That'll be our last question today. Uh, we have several customers that use Tableau. Yes, I mean, Archivist is an open database, so you can integrate with a lot of different things. Okay. With that, I'm going to take control back. All right, so wrapping this up, just a couple of things right here. Um, for more information, on, uh, we have some special programs and offers currently going on right now. And um, our current promotions, we have a Leica promotional offer. Leica is offering financing and other promotional offers for BLK360, blk to go and more. We have a training promo right now uh, for any of our live online classes. You can save 30% off the course cost. All live online courses titles are, avail are eligible for the discount. You must purchase them by October 31st and completed by November 30th. And trade in and save 25% from August 7th through August 20 or through October 23rd. You can save 20 25% on any industry collection or qualifying individual products when you purchase an eligible three-year term subscription with single user access. Um, and if you have any questions or comments, please send those to Lori Elliott here. As a reminder, I'm doing an AutoCAD Tips and Tricks webinar um, in on December 17th of 2020, and today's recording will be available on our resources pages under AutoCAD at imagineit.com. Everything you need to know all about AutoCAD all in one place. Lori, do you have anything else to 